Good morning, I'm Pastor Doug, and welcome to Wesley Church's morning worship service. Today we're joining United Methodist Churches across the Susquehanna Conference for a shared worship service. I want to thank Bishop Park and the Cabinet for this gift of Sabbath for the pastors and worship leaders of our conference. Today you're going to be blessed by the Salt and Light team as they lead our music, and you will hear Joyce Davis, the conference lay leader, bring the morning message. Joyce is a veteran journalist, published author of two books on international affairs, and is recognized nationally and internationally as she has addressed many key issues. She is highly active in ministry, and both her father and grandfather were pastors. I want to share a few announcements with you about the activities here at Wesley Church. Wesley has committed to fulfilling the mobile van in cooperation with Do Over Ministries. We are focusing especially on socks and gloves in this cold weather. We are also collecting coats, sleeping bags, thermal underwear, flashlights, batteries, AAA and AA, hats, and backpacks. And they're going to be distributed this week, uh, Wednesday. So we need your donations no later than Tuesday. We are planning a short Ash Wednesday service that is going to be pre-recorded and available on Ash Wednesday at 7 a.m. and throughout the day. It will be posted on both Facebook and YouTube. We're having a vacation Bible school planning meeting via Zoom on Thursday, February 18th at 6.30 p.m. for everyone interested in helping with vacation Bible school. If you'd be interested in joining the meeting, please contact Christopher Albright or Amy Whitworth, and they'll happily send you an invite. Wesley Preschool is now accepting applications for the 2021-2022 school year. Classes are available for one and a half through pre-kindergarten and are designed to meet the needs of a child during each stage of their formative years. Applications are available on our church website, wesleyum.org forward slash preschool. Finally, we're doing a church-wide focus for Lent on Adam Hamilton's book, The Way, Walking in the Footsteps of Jesus. I will be preaching each week on the theme of the week's lessons, and Jeff Miller will be leading a study during Sunday school. Please contact Jeff Miller if you would like to join the class, and he'll send you an invite. Now let's watch a short video where Adam Hamilton tells you more about this study. Hi, my name is Adam Hamilton, and I'm the author of The Way, Walking in the Footsteps of Jesus. And in this book, my intention is to take readers to the Holy Land to explore the life and ministry of Jesus. 
we're, we're going to go to the places where Jesus walked to see the places that Jesus saw and to reflect upon the key events in the life and ministry of Jesus as recorded in the Gospels. We're going to begin at the Jordan River and here we'll remember the baptism of Jesus. We'll move to the wilderness in Judea and we'll reflect upon his temptations and what they meant. We move from there to Capernaum, Jesus' hometown for the three years of his public ministry and we'll remember his healing ministry. From there we go to the mountains where Jesus walked, where he prayed all night and, and where he gave his most famous sermon. We return to the Sea of Galilee and on the Sea of Galilee, I'll take you out in a boat on the sea and we'll reflect upon the meaning of the amazing and dramatic stories that happened on the sea. From there we'll go to the region of the Samaritans and we'll actually meet a Samaritan priest, one of the final remaining Samaritan priests, and we'll reflect upon Jesus' ministry to the nobodies and the ne'er-do-wells. And lastly, we'll go to the city of Jerusalem and we'll remember the events of the final week of Jesus' life in the place where they occurred. I hope you plan to join me for this study of the life and ministry of Jesus the way so that together we might walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Greetings and peace, everyone. Welcome to worship. My name is Paul Amara, the Williamsport District Superintendent of the Susquehanna Conference of the United Methodist Church. I'm excited to bring greetings from Bishop Jeremiah Park and the entire cabinet to all congregations participating in this shared service today. I am excited that we can gather in this way our sisters and brothers in Christ across central Pennsylvania. This time of fellowship and praise has been created in deep appreciation for all local churches who have been working so hard during the challenge of COVID-19. We pray that this joint service will be an opportunity for renewal and Sabbath for you as we gather to be together with God. Good morning. Would you join me in prayer? We come to you today, O Creator, as people who are made in your image. Lord, give us that same spark of divine creativity so that we can bring life and join you in that endeavor. As your beloved children, help us never to forget who we are. May we, with great purpose, bring goodness that produces healing, that brings love, and that creates wholeness. We are of many colors. We are of many backgrounds. We are of many abilities. And we are of many experiences. But we are one body in Christ. Our oneness reflects the wide embrace of your love for all people everywhere. When one suffers, we all suffer. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. You are the source of our very lives. We come to thank you for the many gifts that sustain us every day and also inspire us. We come to hear your voice again calling us to love, to do justice, to love kindly, and to walk humbly with you. Amen. God of justice, Savior to all, who came to rescue the weak and the poor, who chose to serve and not be served.
Jesus, you have called us. Freely we receive now. Freely we will give. We must go. Live to feed the hungry. Stand beside the broken. We must go. Stepping forward. Keep us from just singing. Move us into action. We must go. shown us what you require freely we receive now freely we will give we must go live to feed the hungry stand beside the broken we must go stepping forward keep us from just into action we must go we must go live to feed the hungry stand beside the broken we must go stepping forward keep us from just seeing move us into Send us out, fill us up, send us out, fill us up, send us out, Lord. Fill us up, send us out, fill us up, send us out, fill us up, send us out, Lord. Fill us up, send us out, fill us up. Send us out, fill us up, send us out, Lord. Fill us up, send us out, fill us up, send us out, fill us up, send us out, Lord. We must go, live to feed the hungry, stand beside the from just singing move us into action we must go Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked, asked them a question to test them. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. May the Lord have a blessing on the reading of his word. Please join me in a time of prayer. 
God, you are love. You hold us dear even when we fail to live out Christ's teaching. Out of love, you call us back to a renewal of our minds and our actions. We confess that sometimes we react out of emotion without taking the sacred space to seek your guidance. Sometimes we hold on to what others need because we are afraid we might not have all that we want. There is a tendency to muffle the voices of those who are suffering because it may require a change in how we live. Change is hard. Sometimes we are so tired from majoring in the minors that we have little left for what is truly meaningful and important. Forgive us, God, for veering from the way of Jesus. Inspire us, Holy Spirit, to awaken and live more generously for the good of all. Inspire us to trust how love works, how love exists as it flows from one to another in relationships we extend to friends, strangers, and even enemies. The natural consequences of sin are so predictable. Where love is absent, suffering, division, racism, hopelessness, greed, destruction, and even death abound. Give us the wisdom and the heart to repent, to turn and choose life, to choose love. Amen and amen. Our second scripture lesson today is from Luke 10, verses 30 to 35. Luke 10, 30 to 35. Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved by pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. God's blessings to everyone today. And may I express my deep gratitude to Bishop Jeremiah Park and his esteemed cabinet for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you today. It is my sincere hope that you will look past this weak and wanting human form and allow the spirit of a loving God to speak to you today, to provide reassurance and inspiration in these difficult times. Let us pray. God, let us open our minds and our hearts to receive your word. May we not turn away, but trust in your will with all our hearts as we seek to do your will. Thank you. 
The Good Samaritan is one of the best known Bible stories and when we hear it, most of us ponder in the privacy of our own hearts, which of the three men passing by would we be? Would we be the priest who crossed to the other side of the street to avoid the man prostrate and bleeding on the ground? We all understand that impulse, don't we? We don't want to get involved. And after all, the priest was probably late for church. Or would we be the Levite, so busy and so rushed, he didn't have time to help a person clearly suffering and probably dying? It's important for us to know that the two people who passed by were God's most faithful, really good people, a priest and a Levite, a man so respected he could serve as a judge or a teacher. But have we ever stopped to think that we could be the person on the ground, wounded and bleeding, hoping against hope someone will stop to help? That was me one day. It could happen to anyone, anytime, anywhere, even could happen to you. Let me share a very real story, a very real life story on today's topic that might help us explore the power of one Samaritan. It was a cold and dreary day, BP, before pandemic. I was walking Alaska, my youthful 100 pound Alaskan Malamute, and I had on a thick overcoat and several shawls, long scarves to block the wind. Alaska wanted to run, and for some reason I thought I was 14 years old, but I soon learned I wasn't and I found myself falling. My foot caught up in my scarf and I was thrown off balance and finally I hit the cold hard ground three times. First my hip, then my elbow and arms, and finally my chin crashed into the pavement, leaving me dazed and unable to move. My hand somehow still held on to Laska's leash, so she couldn't go anywhere, but neither could I. And I recall lying there for what seemed like an eternity, hoping someone, anyone, would pass by to help me get home. I remember thinking, where are my neighbors? But if anyone peeked out of their window that brisk wintry day, not a single good Samaritan, not one rushed out to help. And not one car even turned onto the street where I lay like the man on the road to Jericho. I really needed a good Samaritan. I needed just one person willing to stop by to help. Now in this little story is the message I'd like to bring to you today. At some point in our lives, we may be the ones sprawled out on the ground, figuratively or literally. And at some point in our lives, one person can have the power to help or to look on the other way as we suffer. As Christians, we know one person can speak a word to someone suffering in sin and save a life. Many of us were set on the right path by one person's teaching, by one person speaking the truth into our lives, by one person's love. What we also know as Christians, when we touch one life, we touch thousands. We know one good Samaritan can change the world. Now I spent more than two decades working as a foreign correspondent and traveling the world. And I have witnessed firsthand the power of one person to impact the world for good or for evil. Now the kind of travel I did wasn't really tourism. I went to some of the most war ravaged places in the world, places like Sudan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Egypt. I have seen what happens in places where neighbors turned against neighbors, where extremist ideas take hold and where generations suffer as a result. 
I learned one person has the power to stop the carnage or to push people into genocide and war. I learned never to underestimate the power of one person to spare millions needless agony and suffering or to stir up unspeakable evil and turn neighbors against each other. Yes, I have come to know that peace and conflict often begin and end with one person, with one person like each of us. But it's a sad fact that too often good people stand back and allow the forces of evil, chaos, and destruction to win. Too many good people underestimate their power and remain silent in the face of oppression around the world and here at home. Too many Christians forget Romans 3.21. If God is for us, who can be against us? In my work around the world, I witness the results of what happens when good people cower and when evil is allowed to triumph. I have watched Israeli and Palestinian mothers crying over their dead sons, casualties in a war that no one seems able to end. I have seen babies in orphanages in Sudan suffering the ravages of hunger and AIDS, all brought about by men killing each other. And I've looked into the eyes of young boys in the refugee camps in Lebanon, ready to die and to kill others as suicide bombers. I've spent much of my life trying to understand the reasons for the brutality and injustice we see on the evening news. And I've learned the answer frequently boils down to one person, the power of one person like you and me. In South Africa, it was brought home to me over and over again, the courage and wisdom of one person, one Nelson Mandela, who could inspire millions to seek peace and who prevented what could have been a bloodbath of whites in that country. Then there are others who use their power for just the opposite. They are bent on domination, power, and revenge, and they get millions to follow them. Somehow, we never seem to learn what the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. tried to teach us. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Isaiah 117 offers a little more guidance. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. In times like these, when the world is in chaos and our own communities are racked with political, economic, and racial turmoil, the world needs each of us to live out these words and be that one good Samaritan with the courage to stand for what is right and to help those in need. Let me share with you another little story that may prove even more enlightening, if alarming. I used to work with the mayor of Harrisburg, and one afternoon he came into my office, sat down, he looked a little serious, and he told me my son had been in some danger. He had stopped a burglary, he told me, in process in Harrisburg. He told me Cole was driving down the street when he saw a woman, it seemed like an older Asian woman, being dragged out of a grocery store and into the street. My son started honking his horn and then he pulled his car over. He caused the man to stop and run. Cole then got out of the car and ran to help the woman get back into her store. It all ended okay, but that was a dangerous thing for him to do, the mayor told me. Very dangerous. That man could have had a gun. Well, you can just about guess what I told my son when I talked to him on the phone. 
That was a reckless and dangerous thing to do, I said in no uncertain terms. That man could have had a gun. You could have been killed. What one of us would want our child to risk being killed? What one of us would want our child to be the good Samaritan if it meant getting shot? I think all of us good Christians are in agreement here, which makes it all the more powerful to understand this last little story we should share today. There was another son who did an even more dangerous thing. And frankly, he did it for people who were pretty awful and didn't deserve it in the least. He did it for people who turn the other way when they see suffering and injustice. He did it for people who may even cause injustice and suffering. No, this son didn't just stop a burglary or help a poor woman and her dog up from the pavement. This son not only risked his life to save those who desperately needed help, but he gave up his life so that we might live. He was scorned, he was beaten, he was hung on a cross to die, and he did it knowingly out of love. We tell this story a lot, but it isn't until we contemplate giving up our own child that we even begin to realize what a sacrifice it was. And unlike the imperfect woman, God our Father didn't chastise his son for dying to save the world. Christian friends, we did nothing to earn such love. We don't deserve it. Those who acknowledge his sacrifice and vow to accept salvation are called to do two simple things, to love God with all their hearts and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Now, in case there's any confusion about our terms, anybody who had passed me on that cold day when I lay on the ground would have been my neighbor. And our neighbor was that woman being dragged out of her grocery store. Our neighbors are those who may look differently from us, speak differently from us, and even pray differently from us. Yes, we are called to love our fellow human beings as much as we love ourselves. And if there is any question about what love is, let us contemplate these words again. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So today, as we think about the turmoil in our world, our country, our communities, even our families. Let us remember it will take the power of incredible love to drive out hatred. And let us never underestimate the power of one person, your own personal power, to light a single candle and in doing so, transform our world. Let us pray. Dear God, give us the courage to step out boldly in the power you have given us. Let each one of us pledge to be that good one Samaritan who does not avoid our neighbor, but stands with those who are in need, suffering, and oppressed. In Jesus' holy name, we pray.
sing this with us. They'll know we are Christians by our love. It starts with we are one in the spirit. This is our opportunity to express our love for God through generosity, and I invite you to share in this prayer of generosity. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the power of one Samaritan who lives deeply from compassion and from generosity. As we give our gifts today to our local community of faith, may these offerings be one of the many ways that we express our deep care for other people and for the world. Use these gifts for the good you intend as we follow your lead. Keep our eyes and our hearts open so that we can live as a good neighbor, so that we can stop and be in relationship with people who are suffering. Thank you for walking with us through both the joys and the hardship of our own lives. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, bring joy. 
O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born into eternal life. Amen. Sake of the world, burn like a 
fire been to do your will. You're so good. We thank you for who you are, Lord. Teach us to love more like you. Stop for the one 